Bonnie Murthy from Vegan Wares. Now, she's going to be talking about uh, some of the choices that we make with our purchases. And uh, we've talked a little bit about food just before, but uh, our ethical choices also extend to other products that uh, we buy, such as our uh, footwear, belts, clothing and, and so forth, and even, would you believe, vegan footballs. Yes, as amazing as it sounds, you're going to hear that story as well from uh, Bonnie. And, and I'll tell you one interesting side note. Jason Carstens, who's the MC, he actually ran a, this is a true story, ran a, a, a florist that was in the exact premises that Vegan Wears is, is now, and he believes that he left some of his vegan karma behind. Well, there's no way to scientifically prove it, so it didn't make our health booklet, but, uh, but anyway, that's Jason's story, and he's sticking with it. But anyway, um, having said that, um, uh, Bonnie is uh, just about ready to speak now, so let's hear it for Bonnie Murphy. Hey, everyone. How are you going? Good. Okay, so first of all, thanks to Wally. We all love fries food, I know I do. And um, on Jason's story about the flower shop, it was a flower shop before we went in there, but before that, it used to be a butcher's shop. So it's good to see that we've kind of turned the whole wheel around and turned it into a vegan hotspot. Now, does anyone remember the game we used to play as kids where you'd hold the stick and so you get to speak? Yes? All right, we're going to do that with the football today. So if you have any questions, just yell out. You guys can have a good feel and have a throw around. We'll leave it at that. Okay. So Mark sort of gave me a call um, a few weeks ago and he said, would you like to do a talk at World Vegan Day? And I said, you know what? We could do better. Actually, who here knows vegan wares? Yay, hey guys. Okay, so we are footwear manufacturers. We've been making shoes, vegan footwear in Australia for nearly 20 years now. We've been open for 21 years and we make our products on basis of sustainability and durability. So a product being vegan is just a baseline. There should be no question. I honestly believe that every single product out there in the market should be vegan. That's, that, that's a baseline, right? Things being cruelty free, there is no question about that. But what you want to do from there is go a step forward. You want to buy products that are not just cruelty free, but sustainable and environmentally friendly. There is no point buying a vegan product that falls apart in six months. There is no point buying a vegan product that's made completely out of plastic and we're producing so much CO2, we're destroying so many habitats that while we're protecting farmed animals, we're destroying wildlife, right? Makes no sense. So it has to be a more wholesome approach. So that's, that's sort of where we stand in terms of vegan wares. The other thing that is quite important to us is changing the stigma that's often been associated with vegan brands or just vegan products in general. How many people would mention that they're wearing something vegan or eating something vegan and feel like they're being scoffed at purely because that is vegan by the mainstream? Yes? Yes. So. Do any of those people ever ask you, oh, okay, it's vegan, what is it made of? No, there is, uh, there is no process where someone questions the materials behind a product, the quality of the product, the manufacturing of the product. They look at the fact that it's vegan and hence, oh, well, it must not be as good as leather. I am wearing a pair of shoes that is eight years old, that has been around the world traveling with me at least twice. I have not yet resold them. I think that pretty much outlasts most leather products out there, right? You look at that and you look at someone who goes and buys $500 leather shoes because, well, oh, they say, you know, Marc Jacobs on them and they fall apart in six months or they can probably wear it for five nights and there they are, they're done. Considering that and considering how that is a substantial waste of resources on a planet that we have saturated as a human species, where we have pretty much tipped off balance, we, I think, have a responsibility to consider what we are buying, where it comes from and who it affects, 
right? And it, it doesn't just have to be about cruelty. It has to be about more than that. Um, Peter, who's my stepfather, established Vegan Wares in 1995. And when he established the company, he called it Vegan Wares. And a few years ago, when I came and joined the company, I had a conversation with him and I said, why did you use the name Vegan Wares? Because having vegan in the name means that a lot of people won't even consider coming in the door. They won't even consider buying it because, you know, it's outwardly branded. As opposed to vegans, we would love to have our products say vegan because we want to be recognized for the fact that we care more about a lot of other things than just ourselves. But a lot of people don't want that brand out there and they don't want to buy vegan products. So that was my... I asked him, why did you name it vegan products? And his answer was, I knew that there was a stigma attached with the word but I'd hoped that if I used the word vegan and made a product that was that good, that was so much better than leather, that eventually, due to the quality and also due to the familiarization of the word vegan, we would take the stigma away from it. And that's true, right? 10 years ago, even five years ago, if you told someone you were a vegetarian, they rolled their eyes at you. Now, being vegetarian's okay, vegan, oh my God, you must be an extremist, right? It's clearly such a big step from going vegetarian to vegan, but it's not. It's the same principle. It's about how far you're willing to go, how far you're willing to implement the things you believe in. So, Peter and I had this chat and then we started another brand called Ecomico. And if you guys have been to our stall today, you would have seen some of the range. Now, Ecomico is vegan wares materials, vegan wares designs. They are made in India. I'll get to why they're made in India in a second. But um, the principle behind Ecomico was A, to provide our customers with a range that's slightly more affordable because Australian-made products can be very expensive. But the other part of it was to see what the reaction is from the mainstream to something that's not outwardly branded vegan, but is a completely vegan product. Surprisingly, people are much more open to it. Now, this is not to say that either one of those approaches is wrong. It is just to say that I think there is a stigma attached to the word vegan or something being classified as vegan. And I think it's important that we educate people who sort of impose that stigma to consider what the products are being made of as opposed to just, you know, sort of the ethics behind it, which the ethics are important. But I think it's our job to educate people to make sure that they don't disregard something purely because they hear that it's vegan, right? All right, who here wants to have a play with the footy? Someone, anyone, yay. Um, now, do you wanna come get it? Cause I'm a terrible kick. There you go. Now, who wants to, sorry, what was your name? James, who wants to be James's friend? Come on guys, don't leave James hanging. Yay, come on over. Hi Heidi, how are you going? Heidi is wearing a Sea Shepherd t-shirt and we love Sea Shepherd, we love supporting them. Those guys do amazing work putting their lives in danger. Um, do you guys want to have a little bit of a throw and then tell me... Yes, you can. You just did. Sorry, Heidi just said there that she couldn't catch. I think she can. There we go. Give it a throw, Heidi. Or a kick. Whatever you feel like. Now, I've, I've got one of these that I take to the park with my dog, and my dog's a lab cross in Irish setter, and there's no lab in him, there is just Irish setter, and he goes crazy, because he, he just thinks it's a little thing that he's got to run around and chase. And we've had the footy for three years, and it's still going strong. So, we... <laughs> The reason behind footy was basically that we had a lot of demand for it. A lot of people were asking for it. And um, basically that my stepdad, who happens to be the owner of the business, is a big fan of AFL. So, you know, he, he wanted a footy for himself, so he got a few hundred extra made. That's just how it works when you're a business owner, I guess. 
Um, thank you, James. Yeah, go for it. Thanks, guys. Um, gosh, I don't know. I sent Mark a list of sort of talking points I had, and um, I'd come in here thinking, oh, I should really write a speech, and I was like, no, 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 I'm going to go there, and I'm just going to have like a really honest conversation with the guys about what comes to my mind, and I'm standing here going, shit, I should have written that speech. Um, <laughs> Okay, does anyone have any questions for me? Anything about products, about how things are made, about the footy? Go for it. I'm gonna come down to you. Sorry, I missed most of your speech. That's okay, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, so artificial leather is Normally speaking, what's out in the market, especially in Kmart or Target or Big W, which is where a lot of people will go to get their vegan shoes because they're cheap and they're affordable, um, what they're made of is generally a PVC base, right? And PVC is harmful for the environment. It's plastic. It doesn't break down. Having said that, there are a lot of materials out there that are artificial leather that are derived from different sources. So we use, the main one we use is called Lorica. Um, you guys can look it up, Lorica or Eco Lorica. Lorica is a high-tech synthetic microfiber, right? It's made out of chemical compounds of polyamide, polyurethane. Polyamide is a lab compound. Polyurethane is a byproduct of the petroleum process that normally goes to waste. So it goes into landfill. The company Lorica, the company who makes the product Lorica, figured out a way how to use that with polyamide and make a microfiber that mimics leather. How that's different is A, it breeds, right? Leather breeds because leather is skin. Um, and often PVC and synthetic based shoes don't breathe, which is why you get sweaty feet in them, which is bad for your feet and, you know, not so good for the shoes either. Um, then you've got, so it's breathable, water resistant, um, and it's durable, right? It stretches and molds like leather and all of that stuff. But, a lot of the products that are out in the market that are labelled as vegan often don't go that far. And I'm talking that far because Lorica is expensive, right? It's, it's not a cheap material. I'm saying that because our shoes kind of start around at about 250 and they kind of, you know, the tall boots sit around at 350. That's not, that's not an easy money to spend. Right? You, you don't have that sitting in your bank account and go, oh, you know, I just feel like a pair of shoes today, here's 350 bucks. The principle behind Lorica is that, look, eight years old, right? For the first year I had them, less than a dollar a day, right? Less than a dollar a day for the first year I had them. I've had them seven years since. Now there's where value kind of sits as opposed to buying a $50 pair of shoes that's gonna fall apart in six months and then buy another 50 and another 50 and another 50, right? And before you realize in eight years, you've spent a lot more money than $350. But the material itself, look, Lorica is designed to biodegrade, right? It doesn't biodegrade in our lifetime, but it does biodegrade in the century. If any one of you is curious about that, come to the shop. I've got a wallet a customer dropped in that's 15 years old, and you can see how it wears. You can see how the material starts to fall apart. You can kind of see it on my shoes if you look close enough. I hope you don't. Um, so, it, the, look, there's, there's materials out there that are sustainable, that are vegan. Pinatex, for example, we were experimenting with it, which is the leather made out of pineapple fiber, obviously designed to biodegrade. Moose skin, which is um, leather made out of mushroom. Um, there's another one made out of kombucha tea. I don't know what it's called or what, it, but it's, it's basically they've used the fermented tea, they've used the top layer that ferments, and they've designed, they've figured out a way to process it and convert it into a leather. That's incredible, right? So we, we are at a time and an age where we have the technology to use these materials and we're, we're constantly trying to find new things that will help us make shoes that are, uh, ideally I'd like to not use synthetic at all, right? The more natural things we can use, the more natural the process, the better it is. Having said that, we've got some sneakers up at the stall that are made out of recycled plastic water bottles. So people out there are doing amazing things with what they can do. 
with different materials and reusing materials. So to answer your questions, when someone tells you that vegan materials are bad for the planet, yes, some are, most are good. To be honest, at the end of the day, any of them are better than leather. I'm sure if you look up the statistics in terms of, uh, <laughs> these people are not gonna consider cruelty. I'd say cruelty was an obvious one. But if you look at statistics just in terms of greenhouse effect and the wastage and the impact, the environmental impact leather production has on, you know, on the planet or the area it's being produced in, it's far more extensive than most synthetics would have. And the other issue with that is, people's argument to that is often that leather lasts. How many people do you know who buy leather shoes who actually hold on to them? Right? Most shoes out in the market, this is part of sort of the consumerist culture that we live in, most shoes out on the market are designed to last you a year tops because A, they want you to come back and buy more shoes, right? And B, fashion. You gotta look what, how everyone looks, you know, every season. And God forbid you, you know, wear a classic shoe that lasts you 10 years. I mean, you're clearly not cool enough if you're doing that. But this is, this is my whole thought process behind. It is our responsibility to educate people, to tell them that it is okay to have vegan products because they are better than leather, right? Not, not just in the fact that it's an ethical choice and it's a cruelty-free choice, but also in the fact that it's the logical choice. It's a reasonable choice. If they're even slightly environmentally concerned or if they even think about leaving a planet in a half-decent condition for their kids, they're going to have to listen to that. Like, what choice do we have otherwise, right? Any other, any, any other questions? Sorry. Ramble on. I work as a metal fabricator and I use leather products to protect my hands and from the heat from the equipment. There's no, there's no replacement for it. It's just that there, um, there's a shortage of even leather products and gloves for the industry in factories. You know, sometimes they can't even get enough in for everyone to wear in the factory because there's a worldwide shortage. And I, th I think a lot of it has to do, um, again, in my opinion, with sort of uh, the consumerist culture that we're a part of. So, uh, Marco, wasn't it? Marco was just saying that he works in a metalworking factory where he can't find um, uh, even good leather alternatives for a particular glove he needs to use, and there are no synthetic options for it. And look, I'm not surprised. I'm. I'm not surprised that there aren't because unless companies know and people know that they can make money out of something, they don't look into it. Looking at, you know, how many alternatives there would be if one company has monopoly over a certain product, other company often doesn't try and go into the research and development process to create a new product, right? Because then there's marketing costs involved, there's involved. So I think, I think a lot of it is that sort of lack of wanting to create change and often it's become a lot more about making profit. And I think that's a culture we need to steer away from. Um, and I think reducing consumerism and buying more and more sustainable products and asking for products like you just have and telling people that we want something that lasts longer than six months, that's what you need. And hopefully eventually they'll hear us. And, uh, one of the things that probably people need to know is where your address uh, is uh, ah. and uh, also your operating hours. Yeah, sure. Um, 78 Smith Street, Collingwood. Um, we're pretty much corner of um, Smith Street and Gertrude Street and open 11 till 5, Monday to Saturday. So, and I just wanted yeah. to make a comment. I actually got a pair of vegan wares uh, safety boots that I used when I used to work at Buildex many years ago. This was 15 years ago, and I was still wearing them yesterday during setup. Okay, this is, so this is a pair of vegan wares safety boots that I bought 15 years ago. So anyone who thinks that uh, you know, vegan wares uh, leather alternatives don't last, well, there's living proof. And Dave, Dave Ogilvy, who was also president of Vegetarian Victoria before me, he's actually got a pair that's about 20 years old. So, uh, you know, anyone who thinks they don't last, you, you know, they haven't actually seen how good the quality actually is. Thank you, Mark. That's, I really appreciate that. <laughs> I love this. Uh, every time I'm in the shop, I'm 
doing retail and I love to because I love to talk to you guys and I love to know what you want and, um, you know, it kind of helps a way to look look away from um, accounts and talk to actual people because numbers are scary. Um, <laughs> but the amount of times I'm serving in the shop and other customers come in and make the sale for me because they will turn around and go, oh yeah, I've had a pair of shoes for like 15 years and I had mine made and I've had them for six and my wallet is like 10 years old. That's a moment that I am proud of. That's a legacy that Peter, my stepdad, is leaving me with. And I don't just want to keep it, I want to improve it. Going forward, any one of you has any thoughts on vegan products that, you know, normally are leather but can be done better? Any suggestions you want to make that we can do things better? I want to hear from you. Thanks, guys.